Hi, my name is Bradley Hansen. If you're here, you're probably interested in the Revo 12 to 15 pound robot kit. Um, following the instructions, which can be found online at Revo.com and going to the tutorials uh, and the robot kits and then Revo robot kit, uh, you can find how to build the basic structure as well as uh, doing the chain and, and all that. Um, but now we need to cover the basic electronic connections that are made. Uh, there's no soldering involved in this particular kit, but uh, if you need to make any changes, you can on your own. Um, but we'll go over the basic connections and um, then go over radio binding and making sure everything's set up correctly. Um, and then we'll go into battery charging, care, and maintenance. Thank you. All right, so welcome to the electronic connection portion of uh, the Robot Revo kit uh, instructions. Um, we already have the motors, of course, mounted, and they have their connectors as well as we have the switch mounted, uh, the main power switch with its two connectors. Uh, these are known as XT60 connectors, a very popular connector in uh, the RC markets today. Um, now, if you were to look them on the outside, you might say this is male and this is female, um, but actually you go off the bullet connector, so this is male and this is female. That's important to note for the future, uh, but your, both your motors, uh, drive motors, have male connectors. All right, so now we're going to bring in the Rage Bridge, which is kind of the heart of the operation. Um, you'll notice it has several different types of connectors. Um, in this case, these are blue, um, but they might be a different color in yours. Uh, but you'll notice that these are the drive motors, uh, the drive motor leads, and they're a little bit closer in. The, the power lines will be the furthest out uh, lines, and they'll be bridged together already into a connector for you. Uh, we also have some servo lines that go to your receiver. This is where um, signal is sent um, to let them know, to, to, for your radio to let the radio bridge know what you want it to do. Uh, there's also a sl small jumper on here, and that is used for mixing. Um, so what I do is I'll go ahead and connect the, the receiver that comes with your robot, as well as note the bind plug. Do not lose this. Uh, this is very important for binding the radio to the receiver, and we'll go over that in the next step. So what I tend to do is I go for the second channel to the first channel on this, and the first channel on the rage bridge to the second channel on the receiver. So I'm going to take the second channel from the rage bridge, and you want the ground or black wire to be to the outside of the receiver, and the white signal wire on the inside. I'm going to go ahead and connect this to channel 2, and I'm going to take channel 2 from the rage bridge and go ahead and connect this to channel 1, making sure that I have the signal wires on the outside and the grounds on the, or I mean it's the grounds on the outside and signal wires on the inside. All right, so now I have the, rec the receiver connected. Now I'm going to go ahead and connect the uh, motor lines um, from the rage bridge to the actual motors themselves. Now note these connectors are a little tough to get in, but they're even tougher to get out. And make sure you don't just pull on the wires, you might pull the wire out. So make sure you pull on the connectors to get them out. But you don't want them to be too loose or they'll just come off in combat and that's not what you want. So now we just have one connector left on the rage bridge and that's the power line. Now this is the main power switch. Now you can, if you, if you notice, you can plug your battery directly into this, but we need to be able to turn the robot on and off safely and have an indicator light knowing that we're doing right. So we're going to go ahead and connect the rage bridge to the main power switch. And then once that's done, this is the time to place the Velcro on the back of the rage bridge and line up where you want it in the robot. Because once you get all the wires kind of where you want them, um, you need to make sure that you have enough slack that they're not going to be too tight. You don't want to put it way up in the front of the robot. You want to kind of put it in a nice, nice safe spot. In this case, I'm going to put it right here. And notice how I'm pushing on the outside this, this heat sink panel and not the actual rage bridge itself. You don't want to damage the rage bridge in any way. So I just push uh, on these little outside metal, uh, the heat sink, excuse me. Um, so now I also have uh, some Velcro on the receiver that I'm just going to go ahead and place down for you. Um, just to keep it in place, you can do that a couple different ways and place that wherever you want it. So now we have one connector enough, and that's the main power switch. Now, your battery is going to be a little different than this. This is a, a test battery that I have on hand. Uh, it's actually a different type of battery, but it goes into what your battery connection will have, which is this female connector. Um, so we're going to take these Velcro straps are already lined through, and you're going to have a foam pad here, of course. So we're going to put the battery in place. Now you might need to orientate a different way so that the wire will reach. But you're just going to put the Velcro packs through. Okay, tighten the Velcro, push down, pull out. Just to make sure there's no slack on the bottom of the robot. So if, you know, something, no, nothing can really catch it. And then of course, once you have the distance of how tight it is, you can go in and clip that. But now the battery's in there snug. And 
we're gonna have the battery plug into the last possible connector, which is in the main power switch. Plug that in. And now we are all wired up and ready to go. And we'll move on to the next step, which is binding the radio. And so we can get going. Now don't turn this on right away. Um, the reason for that is you don't want it to accidentally go forward on you or anything like that. You want to lift it up off its wheels and be as safe as possible. But that's it. And let's go on to the next portion. Thanks.